Welcome back everybody. This is Steve KM9G and today I wanted to play around with some antenna orientations, some antenna configurations and see what all the fuss was about. See if one was better than the other, whether it made any difference or not. Just gather up some data that I didn't have before practically in the real world here at my QTH. What I'm going to do is play with a Nevis style, an Nevis style antenna and inverted V sloper and finally a vertical and i really hope that all of those hand gestures help make some sense of all of this mess stick around okay so what we have here is the nfed half wave setup nevis style this is in an east west configuration and it is about three foot off the ground i'm running about 20 watts because you never trust the meter you know meters lie all the time you gotta do real world stuff like this in order to verify what's going on and all I'm doing right now is listening. So this is what stations I can hear based on their uh, FT8 signals that they're transmitting. So you can see I'm getting a little bit into Maryland to the east. I'm getting down as far south as lower Tennessee, Oklahoma area. I'm getting up into Winnipeg, Canada, and I'm not getting a whole lot of reception from whatever happens to be going on in the west not a lot of reception on this antenna. This is kind of the design benefit of running an antenna in the Nevis format. Having it close to the ground makes signals that are in closer to you easier to receive and it makes your signal go almost straight up and almost straight down instead of going outward to the horizon, bouncing off the horizon and coming down farther away off in the distance. It just kind of goes up and right back down. So this is the difference what we're taught to believe with Nevis, but you can see that, that that close in up and down isn't as close as you might think. I mean, I'm getting all the way out to the East Coast from the upper Midwest here. Let's see what transmit looks like on this antenna. All right, from a transmit perspective, I am down into uh, Southern Alabama. I am up into West New York, upstate New York area here. I don't have a whole lot going on in the um, mid-Atlantic, lower, lower Atlantic region. I've still got nothing out in the west, nothing down to the south, and nothing really up north. So this is what Nevis looks like on an NFED half wave on transmit. This is 40 meters, and again, I'm about three foot off the ground. Up next, we have an inverted V design. The inverted V, I switched from east-west to north-south. Uh, the inverted V, the feed point is about three foot off the ground. The center point, the highest point of the antenna is 25 to 30 foot up in the air, depending on the breeze. And then the low point on the far end, the end of the antenna, also about three foot off the ground. So whatever makes that 65 foot piece of wire fit in that orientation is what I did for the purposes of this experiment. So again, we're back to listen only. You can see that I've got uh, still out to Maryland. I'm now out to Long Island. In terms of hearing what's going on, I'm in Virginia, I'm listening in Virginia, I'm listening a little bit lower, maybe northern Georgia, southern Tennessee, hard to tell there. And we're getting a lot of Ohio and Indiana area, and a little bit more to the west, but not enough to really brag about. Let's look at what transmit looks like on the inverted V design. And I'm getting a lot of transmit here in that Ohio, Indiana area. I'm getting down into Mississippi area, lighten up the whole East Coast. I got a little bit of West Coast going on. Not a whole lot. So differences between the inverted V on TX and the um, Nevis on TX, I'd say the inverted V is doing a lot better. Um, but it really depends on what your goals are for the day. So kind of figure out what your what your logistics are. So antenna design number three, antenna setup number three, is a sloper configuration. So we're using that same um, 25 to 30 foot anchor point up in the tree. And then we've got however far out that stretches to reach about a three foot off the ground feed point where the coax meets the end of the antenna and the transformer. Again, this is just plain listening, and I'm still getting kind of that same curve out to the east. I'm lighting up a lot of the east coast. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing, sorry, I'm hearing a lot of the east coast. I'm into Toronto area, lower east side of Canada area, 
getting a little bit more out west. I'm getting a little farther out west than I was before, maybe another state or two over to the west, but I'm still doing really good in, in this area over here and not very good up into the... So this is the receive side of things. Let's light this thing up and see what happens when we start transmitting. On transmit, this looks a lot like the inverted V. This could be chalked straight up to, this was two hours later in the day and therefore propagation has changed a bit. Uh, it could be warmer, colder temperatures, changing the atmosphere in the area. It could be any number of things. So this is the, the transmit on the sloper versus the transmit on the inverted V. So on the sloper, I'm getting kind of a good healthy combination of in close and out far. And on the inverted V, I'm, I'm missing everything that's in close. I missed the entire state of Wisconsin on transmit. But the, the antenna pattern, the radiation pattern looks the same, except I'm missing that internal spot. This is the inverted V on transmit, and this is the sloper on transmit. So you can see I'm getting in close and far on the sloper. So we'll go back to the very beginning. Um, NFED half wave is stuff that's relatively in close. Inverted V is stuff that's relatively farther out. And then sloper looks like it's a combination of the two um, patterns put together. So now for comparison's sake, I'm gonna use a different antenna. This is a vertical antenna. This is a quarter wave, not a half wave. Um, this is set up maybe 75 to 100 feet away in the yard and different coax. So here's the receive pattern. This looks a lot like the sloper sorry, the inverted V receive pattern where I'm getting nothing in close and not too far out on in terms of receive. And then we look at the uh, transmit pattern for the vertical. Again, this is the vertical on 20 watts to make a fair comparison to the NFED half wave on 20 watts. And this looks a lot like the inverted V configuration on transmit. So there's your inverted V on transmit. There's your vertical on transmit. They look fairly similar. I would say that the, the differences are the verticals got some, some more fill in in this area and a little bit more out to the west than the inverted V does. But uh, there's definitely a difference there. Now let's look at transmit on the vertical and see what that looks like. So again, transmit on the vertical, I'm gonna say this looks a lot like the inverted V pattern. Here's the inverted V pattern. Here's the vertical pattern. So let's switch back and forth between those a little bit. This is inverted V, this is vertical, V again, vertical again. You can kind of see that the, the vertical is a little fuller in the areas where it's transmitting, um, but the pattern looks fairly close to being the same. Um, and again, this would have been four to five hours later in the day. So it could just be you know, atmospheric conditions more than anything else. And then just for grins, because the vertical can handle more power, I went up and hit 100 watts on this vertical. And here you can see that we've really filled out this area over here where we have been transmitting to all along, but now we've also got some more propagation out to the western side here. So that's pretty interesting to see. So this is the vertical at 20 watts. This is the vertical at 100 watts. And these were run pretty close back to back with each other. Probably 15 minutes between transmitting at 20 and then again transmitting at a. So real quick comparison between the Nevis style on 20 watts, the inverted V on 20 watts, the sloper on 20 watts, and the vertical on 20 watts. So you can see that the antenna pattern is largely sweeping out to the southwest of southeast of my location sorry i'm looking at it backwards on the screen here largely to the southeast of my location not a whole lot to the west not a whole lot to the north it doesn't really matter what antenna i'm on that's an interesting thing to see i would like to get more western propagation not really 100 percent sure how to go about doing that or why i'm not getting it what are the conditions that are causing that to happen in my area I don't really think there's any specific reason why I shouldn't be able to. I'm just not able to. I mean, I, I can make contacts worldwide, but I can't make reliable contacts to the west like I can clearly make reliable contacts to the east here. It's doable. I could probably set up a schedule and we could probably have a conversation if you were in the west, no problem. But if we were just hunting and pouncing looking for contacts, the chances are 
I wouldn't hear you if you're in the West because I'm too busy focused on the plethora of contacts out in the East. How is your antenna set up? How does your configuration look? What are your takeaways from this video? I'd like to hear your feedback in the comments down below and kind of have a friendly discussion as to what's going on here. This was a moment in time. There are many, many ways to make these kinds of antenna comparisons and all of them have their flaws and all of them have their high points. This really is just my QTH and how my radiation patterns look using my radios and my equipment on this very specific day. And if you've ever been on HF, you know that HF conditions vary day by day and hour by hour within the same day. So this was a kind of a fun exercise. My takeaway from this is if I'm going out to do like a portable activation and I just want to do something real quick, that Nevis antenna is super easy to set up. I can just string it between two picnic tables and I can make contacts halfway across the continent here. No problem whatsoever. I have, I have absolute confidence in this. I've actually done this from three different states. I've done it from Wisconsin. I've done it from Indiana and I've done it from Tennessee. The results are fantastic. From Indiana, we got to California. So I'm, I'm calling that a win if I'm going out and trying to do a park activation and I'm trying to get it done quick and easy. Um, it would take me less time to set up a Nevis style antenna than it would to fail at throwing a rope into a tree three or four times and finally get it right the fifth time. So not a big deal. If I was out there longer, I would set up a different antenna because I would want to get more of that propagation. I'd probably choose the sloper because it looked the best. And if I was out there for a very long time, I would set up a vertical antenna. Like say if I was out for a weekend camping, I'd set up a vertical. I'd go for more DX because you get more DX off of a because of that low takeoff angle. So looking forward to hearing your comments. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for being awesome.